I want you a good morning to you. Uh-huh. <laughs> Jesus Christ is Lord. You notice when when you play back the message that I trust you do on a daily basis so that we can hear it again, you will notice the ticker tape that goes on that whatever the speaker is saying, those words pop up on the screen. So those that uh, cannot hear, but they're watching, they can read the screen. And we need to be aware of that because if you're preaching with me, your words pop up there too. Because this mic picks them up. It's good in some cases, but it's aggravating in others. And we've gotten some calls that said it's frustrating. So we're between a rock and a hard place. When you hear the truth, you, you can, sometimes can't help but say hallelujah. Amen. And like that amen, it popped up on the screen. And as if I said it. Now, so if you say anything, make sure I would say that. That's why when I said that, usually you don't hear me say anything. But I'm saying it on the inside. And sometimes the word is so powerful until tears begin to flow. And my nose begin to run. It's so powerful. Because it's doing something on the inside. And that's what we need to do. Make sure that that word is working mightily in us. Glory to God. Uh, just for the record, uh, let's give the Lord another praise. Right? <laughs> Morning glory. <laughs> Just for the record. Uh -huh. Yeah, we're here. And uh, uh, both young and older ones as well. Glory to God. Uh, turn with me to <laughs> Jeremiah. Chapter 1 of Jeremiah. Mm -hmm. Look in chapter 1. Jeremiah. We'll pull in there at verse number 12. Jeremiah 1, 12. This is the Lord speaking to his servant. <laughs> he said, Then said the Lord unto me, Thou hast well seen for I will hasten my word to perform it. Now, here is a realism from Scripture that happened. God spoke. He showed Jeremiah something and asked him, what did he see? And Jeremiah responded, this is what I saw. And the Lord told Jeremiah, you, you see real good. And what you see is what I'm going to do. Will you say that with me? What you see is what I'm going to do. Now the question for us is what are we seeing every day? What are we seeing every day? Remember this, this same prophet, if you go over to... Um, Chapter 29, Jeremiah 29, pull in at verse 11. Verse 29, I mean, chapter 29, verse 11. This is the Lord speaking. For I know my thoughts that I think toward you, said the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. What do you see, Jeremiah? That's what I'm going to do. Uh, what, are you, wh what are you thinking, Jeremiah? Are you thinking my thoughts? Are you thinking like I think? Do you see what I see? Do you know what I know? Do you say what I say? Are you doing what, I do what I'm doing? 
Remember the Lord said, the works that I do shall you do, and greater works than these shall you do, because I go to the Father. We're servants of the Lord, may not be as potent as a, a Jeremiah. You know, I, I don't envy him at all. I'm looking forward to sitting down and talk with him if it's for five minutes out of a thousand years. During the millennial reign of Christ, I'm looking to sit down with him and have a meal with him and fellowship with him. But in the meanwhile, I'm listening to what God said to him and making some applications of what is the interpretation. Because everything that was written is for our learning, for our profit. So I want to see what God is saying. I think it was Hosea. He said, I would get me up on my watch to watch to see what the Lord was saying to me. Watch to see what the Lord was saying to me. Not just hear what he say, but see what he says. And what you see, he says, write it down. Make it plain upon tables. So those that read it will run with it. There's a vision that's going to be performed. And only those that read it will run with it. Everyone else will be sleepwalking so every day we have to ask ourselves what am I seeing and what am I hearing what do I know because what I don't know can be my problem my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge my people go into captivity because they have no knowledge Having laid that out, let's go over to Colossians chapter 3. This is what we need to know. Colossians chapter 3. Beginning with verse 1, it says, If ye then be risen with Christ, that's a big if right there. Because everybody that's crucified with him are buried with him and raised with him and ascended with him and seated with him. Because it all happened on God's side. We were chosen in Christ before the foundation of the world. So once we believed on Christ, it became our experience. But as far as God is concerned, it was already a done deal. But then... In the subjective, real-time experience, if ye then be risen with Christ, if we're thinking like that, if we're talking like that, if we're walking like that, if ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above. Now, if we don't think, speak, and act like we're risen with Christ, guess what? We won't be seeking those things which are above. Number one, because we won't know what they are. Because if we knew what they were, we'd certainly seek them. Because a whole lot more go on up there than down here. And, and just practically speaking, if you look at the, the, the Milky Way, okay? okay? And that's just one galaxy out of a hundred billion others. And if you look at all of the, the stars mm -hmm. that, that are observable, mm -hmm. if you look at the sizes of the different planetary, planetary systems, you will see the earth is so minuscule. You will find that the earth is so small and seemingly so insignificant compared to all the other creation. You would have to say, man on that, that you can't even see? And nobody would know unless God told them what it is and where it is? So, so much more is going on up there that's so much bigger than down here. All right. We would be seeking what's things that are above and not things on the earth. Mm -hmm. We would have a heavenly mind. We would not be so horizontal. We'd be more vertical. All right. Seek those things which are above where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Wow. Set your affections on things above, not things on the earth. Amen. Now that is an impossibility for people who are not crucified with Christ. 
and the old man buried. And we're walking in newness of life and resurrection. Yeah, it's impossible to set our affections on things above. One translation says, exercise your mind above. Always thinking above and not beneath. You know what? This is one thing that's beneficial for us, that thinking on things above and not things on the earth. It gives us a legitimate out of our earthly situation. It gives us a legitimate out of our immediate situations. It gives us a legitimate out. You know, the world, the devil tried to duplicate that during transcendental meditation and yoga and all that other devilish operations. But when we think on things above, it gives us a legitimate out of our very pain that our body feels. And the reason why some people uh, always have physical abnormalities all their lives is because they're always minding earthly things. They don't take the escape route. We can legitimately, by scripture, by the truth, dismiss ourselves from our immediate situation by thinking on things above and not things on the earth including these earthen vessels. Why? Because you are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. The devil can't find it. Sickness can't find it. The future can't find it because our lives are hid with Christ in God. Glory, hallelujah. That's a great benefit, saints. That'll keep you out of the doctor's office. That'll keep you out of the hospitals. When we exercise our mind on things above and not on our vexations, not on our pain and miseries, not only not what's going on horizontally on the planet. Get above it. Get beyond it. Now here's the key, verse 4. When Christ, now who is, those two words are italicized, and anytime you see the italicized words, and they can help it give a handle on the scripture, good. But if we can dismiss them, they were not there when the translators translated into the English anyway. So in this case, I dismiss them. They're italicized. They were not there in the original manuscript. So I read it like this. When Christ, our life, our life, shall appear. When Christ, our life, shall appear. The key is Christ is our life. Christ is our life. Christ is our life and not in the abundance of things that a man possess. Christ is our life. Our homes are not our lives. Our automobiles and clothes and food, that's, those things are not our life. Right. Our life is a person. A person. Jesus himself said, I am the resurrection and the life. Amen. He that hath the Son has life. That's, that's who and what life is. It's a person. It's a person. And we have to think about that long enough to believe it. What did I just say? We have to think about that long enough to believe it. Do you not know we can hear that and it can go right past us and we never think on it and we never believe it? So then we're trying to hold on to everything else around us, including our abnormalities, including our pain, our fears and mores. We'll hang on to everything. And if we hang on to too much, we'll be like Lot was down in Sodom. He was vexed from day to day with the filthy, unlawful deeds of the wicked. He's in the house. Like uh, sons or son-in-laws or whatever. You need to tell them. We've been sent to destroy this place. And they better get up out of here. And Lot was so vexed when he went looking for his sons-in-laws who had married his daughters. They thought he was mocking. They thought his words was as he was, he was joking. 
In other words, he was so vexed that people didn't believe what he said. And I thought about that. I say, we don't want to get to the place in our lives that we can speak to our children and they think we're joking. They think we're just talking, just pumping uh, through the electrochia, just, just talking. We want people, when we open our mouth, people listen. But we can get so vexed with what's going on, watching TV, uh, smartphones, and everything else. You know, you, you got to be spiritual to have a so-called smartphone. Anybody that's not spiritual that got one of these, they're vexing their soul already. With the filthy conversation, all those pop-ups. It, it, it pops up onto your, the category of your mind. It goes onto the battlefield. It's, it's, it's artillery against our way of thinking. All right. And if we don't gird up the loins of our mind and be what? Sober. sober. That's what Peter said. Gird up the loins of your mind and be sober and watch and hope to the end. For the grace that shall be brought unto you at the what? The revelation, the revelation of Jesus Christ. Amen. In other words, we got to have an expectation. Because God has an expectation for us. He told Jeremiah, I want to give you an expectation so that you don't get caught up with what you see and what you hear and what you, what you smell, what you taste and touch. You don't get caught up with, with the, with the uh, horizontal. You, you're, not, you're not spooked with everything that's going on. Because you have a vertical view. You're thinking about things up there, not down here. Amen. Christ, our life. Go with me quickly to Philippians. Turn back. Philippians chapter 4, verse 19. You know what that is. Not only is Christ our life, but verse 19, chapter 4, Philippians. But my God shall supply all your need. According to his riches in glory. By who? I'll read it again. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches where? In glory. By Christ Jesus. So the cash register, if you please, is in glory. If you please, everything we need is in glory. <laughs> everything that we need is in glory. It's where Christ sits at the right hand of the throne of God. Everything we need. And he says, my God shall supply all your need according to his riches. And what is his riches? Unsearchable. You pick that up in Ephesians 3. Paul says, I've been uh, giving grace to preach the unsearchable riches of Christ. His riches are unsearchable. 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 You, can't, you can't even begin to think about how rich he is in supplying everything. But those of us who have been here for a minute, we, we have an idea, but we can't wrap our mind around it. All right. For you, we're dwelling in the risen Christ. And go quickly. You know where I'm going now. John chapter 6. That ye believe on him whom he hath sent. Will you say that with me? Uh, much Because it takes too much discipline. It takes too much discipline to read true. Now we can read funny papers in the newspapers. The devil help folk do that. But when it comes to reading stomp down truth. If we have no discipline in our life, we won't read. And just for, I'm not, you know, I'm not recommending anybody do this. But at one time, I spent an average of eight hours a day in the Word. For three years. It cost me everything. But the clothes on my back. So I don't recommend you doing it. But it takes a lot of discipline to steal oneself and to read. Keep oneself awake and read. And then plead with the Lord. Say, Lord, don't let me read and don't understand what I'm reading. 
a reason I don't recommend it is because it's very difficult to uh, consider what is said for the Lord to give understanding in all things that we hear and read. So the thing to do is not how much you read, is do you believe what you read? Do we understand what we read? And our thinking, our speaking, and our action proves whether we do or we don't. Christ is our life. Christ is our living. And Christ is our work. And he's treating us just like we're thinking. He's treating us just like we're speaking. Say, what you see is what I'll do. If you don't see anything, I'll do nothing. If you don't see right, I won't do right by you. The heir, as long as he's a child, differs nothing from a servant, though he be lord of all. But is under the who? Tutors and governors until the time appointed of the father. When you read that in Galatians 4, you find that when we were children, we were in bondage to the elements of what? The world. And if this world has a grip on us, we're under the bondage of its elements and we are considered as children who are on the same level as slaves. And God treats us like slaves and not sons when we're immature. Even though he's thinking well of us, he's treating us just like we think. And that's why some saints seem to be doing a whole lot more better than others. Because we're thinking better. We're talking better. And we're walking better. Yeah, we, we can take care of things on the earth. It's a cinch, inch by inch. We can get it done. He said, be careful for nothing. Don't be worried about anything. But in everything by prayer and with let your request be made known unto God and the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will do what? Keep your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. You won't have a troubled mind. You won't have a troubled heart. You never have a mental breakdown. You never have aneurysm. You never have Alzheimer's. You never have dementia. You never have any of those things because the peace of God would arrest everything that goes on in your mind. Everything that's going on horizontally uh, the, the peace of God will come and arrest it. I'll close with this because I'm going today to retrieve my shoes. <laughs> but when I took them there, the person had the mask on and spray. And behind a big screen and still spraying. When I walked up, they were spraying. And he sprayed my shoes. To put a barrier between us. But I'm going to break the barrier today. In Jesus' name I pray. Glory to God.